Farmer in the Hill. Today's tutorial, we're going to be going over how to make a tuna tower. Um, for those of you who don't know what a tuna tower is, it's almost like sushi, but it's not rolled. It comes in a um, tower. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't eat raw fish, uh, I'm going to give you some alternatives to make the tower, but not use the sushi. Um, I love sushi, and I had a friend ask me, well, is it worth making it at home? Is, isn't it just as cheap to go out and buy it? We live very far from anywhere that has sushi. We have to actually drive about an hour if we want to have it. So it's nice to be able to make it at home, and it's uh, just kind of cool to say, hey, I made sushi at home. So um, the first thing we're going to go over today is your rice preparation because it is very important. I prefer to use jasmine rice, but whichever one you decide to use, you're going to have to prep it first. Um, what I do, and I make a cup, um, uncooked rice, and that will make about four towers. I have this strainer that I use for just about everything. Um, I think this was my mom's. And um, what you want to do is you want to put your cup of dry rice in here and put it through your sink and let it let it rinse out. And you're going to notice, like if you have a bowl underneath it, you're going to notice that it's very cloudy. Um, you want to rinse it until the water is clear. And um, the ratio for rice, if you use one cup of rice, you're going to use one and a half cups of water. Um, so that is going to go into this pan. And when you're making rice, you want to make sure that you have a pan that has a good, nice, tight-fitting lid. Um, and the other trick to rice is you never, never open the top when it's cooking. Um, you don't want to release any of the steam um, while your rice is cooking. Um, when you make your rice, you don't want to cook it on your largest burner. Um, this is a very delicate rice. Uh, so whatever your smallest burner is, you want to turn it on that. Now I usually put my rice on my back burner is my smallest burner. And I usually leave it on high until I start see it start to uh, simmer. And right away, I turn my timer on to 18 minutes, just in case I forget um, how long it's been going. You don't want your rice, once it gets to simmering, you don't want your rice to cook over 15 minutes. While your rice is cooking, um, we're going to make the additive that you put in your rice that actually makes it sushi rice instead of just plain rice. Um, right here I have some rice wine vinegar and we're going to put, for the amount that we're cooking, we're going to use an eighth of a cup of rice wine vinegar and we're going to use an eighth of a cup of sugar. To that we're also going to add one teaspoon of salt. And once you've got that all together, you're going to want to warm this up. Um, and you just want to warm it on the stove until it starts to dissolve. You do not want to boil it. So once it's all dissolved, just go ahead and turn it off. So we're going to leave it out. And my rice is boiling now, so I'm just going to turn it on low and let it sit there till the timer goes off. Okay, so the rice timer has gone off and I let it sit probably for about an extra 10 minutes with the lid on. But now we're gonna go ahead and take it and we're gonna season it um, with the sushi seasoning that we talked about. That also, I got heated up Everything is kind of melted in. Um, Ariana, my daughter, she's funny because she says uh, when we make this that the rice wine vinegar smells like feet. 
And that's just, she's convinced. She's just convinced that that's what it smells like and you just can't tell her otherwise. Um, one of the rules about sushi rice um, is that you're not supposed to use any sort of metal spoons in it. Um, I have my wooden spoon that I have used for years and years. Um, I would suppose you can use a plastic spoon either. But again, you know, the rice is delicate and you don't want to um, tear it up too much. So all you're going to do is you're going to take and you're going to pour in the mixture that you've made. And then just kind of gently, just kind of work it around, sort of fold your rice in and get it all coated. And then really you don't, you don't want to put, to construct it while your rice is hot. So you can make your rice beforehand and that way it'll give you plenty of time to let your rice cool down um, before you're ready to put your towers together. So now that we've got that all mixed in, I'm just going to leave the lid off and let it sit and cool for a while. While that's going on, um, we are going to make some spicy mayo. The first time I made this, I used regular Hellman's Real Mayonnaise, and then I saw the calorie count on it and I about fell out. So this time when we went, um, we got the Hellman's uh, Canola, which is uh, considerably lower in calories and still with a great taste. So all you're gonna do, and I don't measure, I'm not a great measurer, is you're just gonna get you know, a couple of good spoons full, stick it in your bowl, and this is called sriracha sauce. Um, sometimes you can find this uh, in the uh, Asian aisle, you know, with all the Asian foods. Very, very hot. Uh, I suppose some people season this by themselves, but like I said, I don't really eat lots of hot foods, so I'm very careful when I use this. And all you do is you just want to squirt some in. You can see what I did. And just mix it up. And you can try it. If it's too hot for you, all you do is just mix in some more mayonnaise. And um, that will cool it back down. But this is uh, exactly what they use um, when you go and and you get um, sushi. And if you have it with spicy mayonnaise, it, that's what it is. It's uh, mayonnaise and sriracha. I can usually tell by the smell whether or not it's too hot. This one seems like it's pretty spot on. So we're just going to put that to the side. Now what we're going to use that for is we're going to make some um, crab salad. That's going to be one of our layers. For the people who don't want to do the raw tuna in it, this is um, this is going to be your 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 protein layer in here. So what I do, um, this is just the flake style imitation leg crab that um, that you can get um, in the seafood section of your grocery store, and I just take it and just just cut it up. And it doesn't have to be real small. You know, you just want to get a good little chop on it. Put it in your bowl. Keep going. I should probably be using a bigger knife. So I don't cut my fingers off. Because I've been known to do that. So, just keep on going. My husband gets very nervous when I start chopping around with knives. I am very careful, just uh, I don't pay attention all the time. So that's good. You see we just got it all diced up and really this is probably more than what I'm going to need. But like I said, I don't measure. so. Alright, so we've got that, and now all we're going to do is we're going to take our spicy mayo mix, 
and put it in. And you don't want, I mean, you don't want just so much in it that it's, it's just, you know, nothing but the spicy mayo. You just want to kind of get all this kind of coated in the bowl just to give it some flavor. And this helps, helps it hold together when you put your tower together, sort of like the glue that holds this layer together. So there you go. That looks good right there. So there you go. There's your crab layer right there. Okay, so now we're ready to deal with the actual uh, tuna itself if you decide that you want to have the tuna on your tower. Um, this is a tuna steak sushi grade that I got from our grocery store in Tyler. Um, I would only suggest that you use a fish that is sushi grade. It is handled differently, and um, even though uh, what's in the case may look kind of tempting, I have never used anything else but a sushi grade fish. So this is a beautiful sushi tuna steak, and what we're going to do with this is I'm just going to, it's kind of a big piece, so we're just going to dice it up. Some of the other ingredients that you're going to need when we come to this part is you're going to need um, some sesame oil. And like I said, you know, typically all these products you're going to find in the Asian section of the grocery store. Um, you can either get regular sesame oil or toasted sesame oil. Uh, either one is fine. The first time you make this, it's going to seem like you have to buy quite a bit of stuff. But this is going to last you for a long time. Um, so the stuff like the sesame oil and uh, the ponzu, which that, that's the other um, seasoning up there, you you're, you buy it once and, and probably it'll last you all year unless you're just making it all the time. Okay, so we got that all diced up. Okay, so like I said, I'm not a measurer. So, I'm just going to take and do not use too much of this. You just want to do just a little drizzle. If you don't feel comfortable that you might use too much, pour it in something else um, and then pour it in. That way it's a little bit more control. The Ponzu, there's no way to explain this except for when you smell it. It smells like sushi. It smells like what you expect you're going to taste. Um, this I'm a little bit more liberal with. And then also, I like to put a little bit of it in the crab as well. Most of y'all have seen one of these. Maybe not. This is made by Pampered Chef, and it's a measuring cup. You can measure dry and wet liquids. Um, this makes the perfect tool to make these towers with. If you don't have one, I'm sure a friend does, borrow it, find you one on eBay, find someone, I'm sure one of your friends sells it, they all do. So if you'll take that, you'll need this too. Get you a separate plate, and we're gonna start putting it together. Okay, so you've got your rice in there. That looks like a lot, but what we're gonna do now, and mind you, look, this is not sticky rice, but when you prepare it the way that I told you, um, it absolutely will substitute as a great sticky rice. So, all we do is we take the inside and we push it down. And see how that, that compacted down real nice? I think um, our next layer will be avocado. So, dice up some avocados and this is what you're looking for right here. And again, you're just going to, after, after each layer, just gently push down. Okay, now for my friends who don't care to do the tuna, I know you're out there. This here, first off, I say 
if you can do the imitation crab, if you've had the fake sushi before, then you can have real sushi. You don't know what you're missing. Tuna is great. It's a, it's a great source of uh, omegas and healthy fats and you know it's, it's great for you. So I would say kind of try to get yourself out of your comfort zone and, and at least try it. Just try it. You'll like it. I mean the, the tuna. One of my friends um, last night on Facebook, uh, Heather was telling me that she had a crab sack up with that had mango in it. And I told her, well, that's all well and good, but it would kill me because I'm allergic to mango. So I decided to try pineapple. So I found some nice fresh pineapple today uh, when I was at Walmart, and I diced it up. And it's very important with all these ingredients, you don't want too much liquid. So I put it in my strainer, in a washcloth, and went ahead, after I chopped it, I wrung out a lot of the liquid. But I'm going to go ahead and put me a layer of pineapple in here. And our last layer is going to be our tuna, if you so choose. So we're going to get that in there. So you've got this nice tube o tuna tower. So if you're like me, I'm kind of big on, on presentation. If I'm going to make something, I like for it to be pretty. So um, at our local market, well not our local market, our market in Tyler, um, they sell things like eel sauce or wasabi or, you know, different things like that. Um, eel sauce is going to be great on this, so if you if you can find some, definitely pick it up. And what I do is I pour a little bit in the middle. That's enough. And then I just sort of roll it around, get a nice. It's very thick, so. You'll get you a nice circle there in the middle. Now is the fun part. Take your tuna tower, kind of scrape the bottom. There we go. And then you're going to take the right in the middle of your circle there and press down. And voila, there's your tower. And also, I will take, this is the presentation part. This is not how you're going to eat it. Um, so I take this and, you know, I'll do little, maybe little dots of spicy mayo. Because when you eat this, you're going to pretty much use your chopsticks and tear all this up and, kind of smish it all around and, and eat it. Um, 